My name is Arnold Trejo. I'm Director of Financial Aid at the University of Texas, Brownsville. I've been here since February of this year, and um, uh, I've been in higher education for over 30 years. I really love to help first-generation, low socioeconomic kids uh, uh, receive a, a, a degree in higher education, primarily because I'm one of them. Um, I was a first-generation college kid. Uh, my parents uh, had to um, leave school to help with a farm way back when, and they didn't have the opportunities that I had. Uh, we're expected to award uh, over $70 million a year uh, at uh, our institution. S certainly, we're very proud of how much we are helping our students. But the other component or other piece that we are introducing as of late is the concept of financial literacy for our students. We are starting the Student Money Management Center uh, here in our office as part of our financial aid services. Um, and it's primarily to bring uh, seminars and, and workshops to our students. Uh, for example, last month, uh, we brought in, uh, we had a simulcast uh, of a well-respected uh, financial literacy expert talking uh, to our students about uh, credit scores and how credit uh, scores are calculated and what impact uh, debt would have from consumer debt to, to mortgages to uh, student loans, et cetera, et cetera. I think financial literacy is not unique or, or the lack of financial literacy is not unique to the Valley. It, it's nationwide. Uh, studies after study after study shows that the, the typical American does not sit down and figure out a budget, does not uh, sit down and um, find out about their credit scores. And it, it, for example, credit scores impact everything we buy, you know, practically. I mean, in terms of mortgages, in terms of cars, and even insurance premiums are sometimes determined by your credit scores. The Pell Grant program, uh, for example, right now, uh, the maximum uh, Pell Grant is uh, uh, about $5,700 uh, per year. That's for fall and spring. Um, Students are expected to be making academic progress. It's not uh, assistance that goes on forever and ever. Students have to be passing 70% of their coursework. Uh, they have to be maintaining a 2.0 grade point average. And the federal government has essentially limited the amount of semesters that the student can receive these Pell Grants. So. Uh, my advice to our students is that, yes, the, the assistance is there, but it's temporary. It's not something that you can draw from constantly. You have to produce academically as well. Uh, the Texas Grant is a state of Texas grant program, and it's also, you also have to be making satisfactory academic progress. Uh, so there's a next... Yes, the taxpayers of this great nation are willing to invest in you, but you have to do your part to invest in yourself, and that is to go to class each and every day and succeed in your academics. The other piece I'd like to talk about is uh, something that perhaps uh, our families are not fully aware out there, and that is um, tax credits. Uh, Oftentimes, uh, we'll hear, for example, our middle-income families saying, well, my, my child does not qualify for the Pell Grant, so I'm not getting any financial aid. Well, the, the thing is that there is such a thing as, as tuition tax credits. While I'm not here to give tax advice, I would encourage our middle-income families to talk to their, uh, to their tax accountant, to their CPAs, and inquire about tax credits. But one thing for sure that I would never want is for anyone out there to say, I can't go to college because of lack of financial resources. 
there is options. Please talk to us. That's what we're here for.